Rise as you are able for a reading of the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes the sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she is found, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents the gospel of the Lord.
Now much has happened in our nation and world since Memorial Day through Labor Day. Some would say it was a summer of unrest and troubling times. If you were paying attention to the news at all, the stories of places like Orlando and Dallas and Minneapolis and Baton Rouge create all too much turmoil within me as I think about the complexity and the tensions that exist in our society and what can be done about them. And I sometimes feel overwhelmed, helpless and hopeless. What can I do? Where can I invest my energy to make a difference in each of those situations? Mitchell Ethan is a 22-year-old who decided to invest his energy in the arts. Mitchell is a teaching assistant in the mathematics department in the university in College Station, Texas. And following the events in Dallas, Baton Rouge, and Minneapolis, he wrote a poem. We pray for the peace in your world today. The words of his poem have been set to the music of a hymn written in the 1800s by a Presbyterian minister in Lancaster County. And the music and the words will come together as we sing it as our middle hymn this morning. The shepherd in the story put energy into finding the sheep. The woman in the story put energy into finding, locating that coin. Mitchell put his energy into expressing his faith and his feelings through art. <coughs> Locally, people have been investing their energy in trying to make Westchester a more inclusive and safe place to be. A few weeks ago when I was with the mayor and other leaders from the community here, as we heard, read, and signed the Greater Westchester Code of Community Values Resolution and Pledge. We have copies of this pledge available and I hope you'll look at it today or in the coming weeks. I invite you to read it and sign and join with others who have pledged to invest energy in inclusiveness and being a community that provides a safe environment. Let me read just a portion of it, not the entire document. But this came out of the experience of the Borough Council and the University and Westchester School District and residents of Westchester and the local branch of the NAACP coming together and discussing events and what could we do about it as a community? Here's a few of the statements. Whereas there have been recent events in a local park, in our schools, and in the nation that express threats and imply hatred against African American citizens who, mem who are members of this community, whereas respect for each other is the foundation of the growth and stability of Greater Westchester, we agree to pursue opportunities <coughs> To ensure residents and visitors alike feel both safe and welcome, we affirm the dignity of all people. We have come together to make a public declaration of the values we honor, therefore be it resolved. As people of goodwill, we will not tolerate hateful speech or actions toward any individual or group in our community. We know that when one of us suffers, we all suffer and the vibrancy of our community is diminished. We are united in this understanding. So again, I commend this to you, to peruse. There's three different clipboards in our welcome area, plenty of copies of the resolution, and I believe it's worthwhile for us to join around and come together to do something good. Final example of a community who did that 15 years ago to this day. The people in the small town of Gander, Newfoundland, Canada, had no idea what was coming. But on September 11, 2001, that tiny little 
hotel on an island welcomed 38 airliners and thousands and thousands of plane people. Now I had to look it up on a map, so Gander is a small town in the island of Newfoundland, which is northeast of Maine, which is northeast of Nova Scotia. It is like the last stop before you cross the Atlantic to Greenland and Iceland. And in war times, a huge airstrip was built in Gander, and therefore they were able to receive many of those planes that had been redirected when the airspace was shut down. So here they were, for the better part of a week, nearly every man, woman, and child in Gander and the surrounding smaller towns stopped what they were doing so that they could help. They placed their lives on hold for a group of strangers and asked for nothing in return. They affirmed the basic goodness of humanity at a time when it was easy to doubt such humanity still existed. One of the women who was the receiver of their hospitality is Barbara Grove Wallstrom. She ended up meeting her husband during this time in Gander, and she recently said this. It still makes me cry when I think about it. The people in the towns were so incredible. We stayed at the Salvation Army. I met my future husband there. They had people working in that kitchen 24 hours a day five long days, all volunteers. We were 187 passengers on our flight, but they fed us three meals a day. They celebrated us like we were five-star guests. We will never forget their love. Jesus' parables this morning reveal a God who invests in seeking out the lost in seeking and desiring divine redemption so that none would be lost, especially those that might feel unworthy or insignificant. They are valued in God's kingdom. And this divine desire for redemption results, results in the joy of heaven coming down to earth, results in the calling together of neighbors and friends to celebrate what can be done together results in a full-blown, all-out party. Yes, where even Lutherans are waving their hands in their pews. The results in a community where all are invited to rejoice because the shepherd and the woman found what they were looking for. Now to him who is able to accomplish abundantly beyond 